It's hard to overstate just how brilliant Tremors is, jumping between horror and comedy and action like it ain't no bang. Broke into the wrong goddamn rec room, didn't you, you bastard? And knocking the giant subterranean worm special effects so far out of the park that not even the original progenitor of this idea has attempted it on film since. Walk without rhythm, it won't attract the worm. Walk without rhythm, and it won't attract the worm. Walk without rhythm, and we won't attract the worm. Fast forward 25 years, and we're now getting our fifth installment of this franchise. Fans of the series were cautiously optimistic about the release of Tremors 5 Bloodlines in October of 2015. Or at least I was. The trailers were tantalizingly vague, and the brief inclusions of some decent CGI made it look like they poured an encouraging amount of money into the production. So it finally premiered, and I watched it, and... Tremors 5 is like a suede remake of Tremors 2 by a bunch of well-intentioned fans who have no clue how to write a good script. You've got the semi-retired Graboid Hunter living alone in the desert who's approached by a goofy admirer and a foreign government official who convince him to rejoin the fight against the Graboids in a far-flung country where he soon learns that the worms have turned and he's in way over his head. Damn, is that what Jamie Kennedy looks like these days? Fuck you! The second and third acts are devoid of not just drama, but of causality itself. It reminded me of the stories I would invent as a kid, wandering around my backyard with a bunch of toy guns, just inventing scenarios on the fly and then calling it quits once Dad blew the whistle for us to come in. What I'm trying to say is that Bloodlines is bad. The franchise has finally reached the point of unintentional self-parody. The Maasai have been using urine as an insect repellent for centuries. The only good thing about Tremors 5 is that it reminded me of how underrated Tremors 2 is. Which brings me to the subject of today's post. Tremors 2 Aftershocks. Is that a coyote? Yep. Man, he better keep quiet. Yep. Which is, in my opinion, the only Tremors sequel which is even close to on par with the original. If you ask me, this is a two film franchise. At the beginning of the film, Earl is suffering from some mild PTSD, and he's staying far away from the Graboid scene. He's approached by Grady Hoover, an enthusiastic admirer, and a representative from a Mexican oil company, who offers to hire Earl to hunt Graboids down in Mexico. Earl is initially horrified by the idea. Sure, Val married a good woman. Why would he want to die? Uh, of course, we are willing to pay. Of course, they're willing to pay! But then, in a very organically written, dramatic, and funny scene that plays out over the course of several minutes, Grady, and the promise of $50,000 for every confirmed Graboid kill, convinces Earl to sign up for the mission. Senor Ortega, you've got a deal. So off they go to Mexico, equipped for anything that a Graboid could possibly throw at them. <laughs> we spend the first act delighted as Earl and Grady kick some Graboid ass in exciting and inventive ways. And the buddy-buddy chemistry between these two is fantastic. Okay, hit it, hit it, get him! Oh, Earl, what are you doing? Hit it! Hit it, hit it, hit it! Hit it, Earl! <laughs> Soon enough, Earl calls his old pal Bert, who has his own reasons for joining the fight. Somebody dig this out of some Hollywood warehouse and send it to me now. Things are looking pretty good for the group. And then... The worms turn. God almighty. Not to give too much away, but basically, the Graboids have a new terrestrial form, complete with heat vision and the ability to reproduce hermaphroditically. Faster than a Catholic rabbit. Which forces the group to rejigger their entire monster hunting game plan, which quickly morphs into a monster survival game plan. Path. As with any great film, the core strength here is the writing. Tremors 2 has an exciting, dramatic plot, uncharacteristically endearing characters, and more quips than a Joss Whedon film. I am completely out of ammo. The acting, too, is much better than the straight-to-video horror genre is used to. That's never happened to me before. Grady could have easily become the Jar Jar Binks of the franchise. Kind of like, you know, every other goofy sidekick in every other Tremors sequel. But he's not. In fact, he's one of my favorite characters. Hey, Bert! Are you sure you don't have any more bullets? Did you check all your pockets? I especially like that Earl isn't afraid of being afraid, and there's even a thinly veiled layer of vulnerability to Bert, which you won't find anywhere else in this series. Heather's not coming back. 
I'd also be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Kate, who's filling the role that has kind of become a patronizingly token element in most every horror movie these days. The quote unquote strong female lead. But where most female leads are in possession of a kind of magical femininity, which I'd broadly characterize as a kind of inexhaustible female affability, Kate is presented as a much more layered, even character who just happens to be female. She's smart, capable, funny, well-educated, and fallible like the rest of the characters. Capable of awkward moments. Oh my god! What? what? Oh, sorry. And occasional hostility. Well, I'm sorry, it looked like a goddamn building to me. Well, why didn't you listen to me? Yes, there's one lingering point of view shot of her butt, but it's immediately preceded by a lingering point of view shot of Earl's butt. Yay, equality! And God, is their flirting cute. Seeing anybody? Not since the monsters arrived. Brief side note, a major beef I have with all the monster films that claim that their monsters are intelligent is that they hardly ever are. I feel that in order for a monster to be considered smart, it has to outwit the characters in ways that I would not have thought of. That's fair, right? Because if they can't outwit me, then they can't outwit the characters, and if they can't outwit the characters, then they're not smart by any meaningful definition of the word. So if you're going to call your monsters smart, they get smarter, that's what they do. You better be ready to get clever with the writing. Invent some interesting multi-layered set pieces with their own internal act structures and surprises. Sounds hard? It is, but it's the only way to do it right. All too often we get half-assed, symbolic demonstrations of intelligence from our movie monsters. Like the talking raptors in Jurassic Park 3. In that film, we get raptors that are so smart they can talk to each other. But so what? Is that supposed to demonstrate their intelligence? I don't think so. They also abandoned their entire nest to go track down two lone eggs and got fooled into retreating by the wheezing machinations of a 3D printed brain harmonica. So they never came off as very smart to me. This basically just boils down to the simple writing rule of show don't tell. But the Graboids, and by extension Brett Maddock and SS Wilson, are. I wouldn't have thought of this. They wrecked their car. Pedro's truck. The radio tower. How can they be so smart? Or this. <laughs> and especially not this. You mean they've been acting so smart because they're so stupid? Looking at the clock, looking to be about that time. Tremors 2 Aftershocks gets the Tequila Award. 1800 Tequila. As opposed to, you know, Jose Cuervo. Because when people hear Tequila, or straight to video horror sequel, they tend to expect something cheap, something dirty, something that fails to satisfy and ultimately gives you a headache. But Tremors 2 and 1800 both deliver an entirely different experience, elevating the medium into something trailblazingly spectacular that nobody was expecting to be that good. South of the border, no less. <laughs>